Welcome back. So another two days of the USA Championships that went down in Eugene, Oregon. Of course, amazing performances. Sidney McLaughlin breaking that world record. Michael Norman being consistent in the 43s, getting his another another title there. Of course, we saw Ryan Benjamin running 47-0 to get the win there. Um, uh, Noah Lyles, Aria Knighton. There were so many performances, but we have to highlight some of these athletes that didn't get as much recognition, but still had some crazy performances. So let's jump into it. First off, we gotta talk about Kendall Ellis. Now, Kendall Ellis finished second place in the women's 400 meters just behind Talitha Diggs, and Ellis ran 50.35 seconds. Now, not a personal best, it's a season's best for her, so she culminated at the perfect time. And again, she finished second place to Talitha Diggs and just ahead of Lina Irby. But this is Kendall Ellis's third consecutive world championship team. She's really becoming one of the most consistent US 400 meter runners that we have over the past couple years. She made the team in 2017 when she was still um, competing for USC. She made the team in 2019 to Doha. And then of course now in 2022. Last year at the Olympic trials, she finished fourth place, just missed out on the podium um, at the US trials to make it to the Olympics. But of course she did go to the Olympics, part of the relays, ran on the mixed relay and ran on the four x four. Again, we really need to have this conversation about uh, Kendall Ellis being one of the most consistent 400 meter runners in the United States, kind of in this post Allison Felix era, right? Um, of course, the United States is kind of a little bit down in terms of 400 meters, but I really think Kendall Ellis is cementing herself as one of the top athletes here. She may not be the absolute fastest. Her personal best is only 49.99, but again, that consistency shows up when we're talking about the United States. Now, getting to the world championship stage, she's going to probably have to drop her personal best a little bit farther. Of course, Shawnee Miller Weibo, of course, Marley Polino, right? There's so many women who are kind of really out there in the 49s. Um, Stephanie Ann McPherson, Candice McLeod, there's a lot of women there. So, Kendall Ellis, consistency, making that team. We're going to see what she does when we get to Eugene in just about three weeks' time. Also behind her, like I noted, Lena Irby. Irby managed to finish third place just behind Ellis and behind Diggs in 50.67 seconds. Again, a season's best for her. She's coming off a win in New York over Ellis, but getting this third place qualifies Irby for her first world championship team, her first global team in an individual event. Remember, at Georgia, she won the NCAA title in 2018, actually ahead of Kendall Ellis. 2019, she took kind of took a step back, got fourth place at the NCAA indoors, and then she went pro. She left Georgia kind of in the middle of the season, and she just went pro. So this is her first team, um, individual team in the 400 meters. We're going to see what Lena Irby does. I think this is a huge performance for her and some really great redemption, considering some ups and downs and some criticisms for going pro. Keep a lookout for Irby. Keep a lookout for Ellis. Keeping in the 400 meters, though, we got to talk about Elijah Godwin. Now, in the men's 400 meters, Godwin finished fourth place, but he ran a personal best of 44.34 seconds. This is a huge performance for him. He has been in the 44 second range. He actually set a personal best earlier this year, running 44.50 seconds. Finished fourth place behind, um, of course, Michael Norman, um, uh, champion Allison, Randolph Ross. Finished fourth place right behind him. So he didn't make the individual team, but he qualifies for the relay team. If you remember last year at the Tokyo Olympic trials in Eugene, um, Godwin managed to finish seventh place in the 400, so really kind of down in the pack, but he did go to the Olympics for the mixed relay. He only ran the mixed relay heats, so he didn't even get to run in the final, and of course he didn't get a place on the four x four. This is gonna place him right there on the four x four, and he has been very consistent. He got in um, you know, kind of almost tragic javelin accident uh, just a couple years back that almost really curtailed his entire track and field career, but he is back now. He has a little bit of an un unorthodox uh, running form. He does go out very, very fast and very, very powerful, but he managed to hold on here. I think we're gonna see a lot more from Elijah Godwin, not only this year when he's going into the relay, but also in subsequent years, as he's of course coming off an NCAA career at Georgia. Now, in the 400, but this time moving over to the 400 meter hurdles, we have to talk about Khalifa Rosser. Now he finished third place in the 400 meter hurdles in a huge personal best of 47.65 seconds. Not only a personal best by almost half a second, his personal best before this was 48.10, First time breaking 48 seconds and qualifies for his first world championship team. This is a huge performance for him, and I think he has a lot more to go. This is not the ceiling for him. Remember, he won races overseas in Poland and then also at the Robot Diamond League. So he's really been winding up for this world championship team um, that he just made here. Um, again, makes himself on the first world championship team, and I think. We don't know what's happening with Carson Warholm. He's injured. He says he's going to be coming back. But imagine that Carson Warholm is not in the picture. That opens up the field. 
Rye Benjamin and Allison Dos Santos, they're gone, right? They're going to be gold and silver in some combination. After that, it's a pretty wide open field, right? Of course, there's a lot of guys, again, Rosser only, only finished third place here, but keep a lookout for what he's able to do. Again, I don't think this is his ceiling. 47.65 is going to probably go down even further when we get to the World Championships. Keep a lookout for him. Keep a lookout for Bassett as well, who finished in second place in a huge personal best, but 400 meter hurdles, we gotta take a look at that. Finishing things off with the women's 200 meters, we gotta start with Kayla White. Now, Kayla White, she didn't make the team, but she significantly improved her personal best on multiple occasions through the rounds. She entered the year, actually entering 2022 with a personal best in the 200 of 22.52 seconds from all the way back in 2019. Then earlier this year, she ran 22.50 seconds for a slight personal best. Here in the women's 200 meters, in the prelims, White ran 22.38 seconds, personal best by a pretty significant margin. She followed that up in the semifinals, running 22.18 seconds, another huge personal best, dropping things down on the cusp of breaking that 22 second barrier. Now she ultimately finished seventh place in the final, but she still ran 22.39 seconds. Again, significantly faster than the personal best she had entering the year or entering these USA championships. She is going to be a problem in the coming years. Remember, I think it was 2019 when she won the NCAA indoor championships in the 200 meters competing for North Carolina a and Keep a lookout for Kayla White. She also did really well in the 100, but this 200 is going to be dangerous for some years to come. Now, finally, I do have to mention Tamara Clark. Now, I mentioned her a little bit uh, for what she did in the 100 meters, but in the 200 meters, I'm actually gonna do a little bit of a video kind of individually on her. She really had probably one of the best meets for a sprinter at these USA Championships. Yes, she didn't make the individual team in the 100. She finished fifth and made it onto the relay. She finished second in the 200, of course, behind Abby Steiner's amazing 21.7 um, second run in the 200, but she was super consistent, setting personal best left and right. So keep a lookout for Tamara Clark. I'm gonna do a little bit of a kind of story on what she did at the USA Championships and leading into the World Championships. But these are some of the athletes I just wanted to highlight that really had some amazing performances at the USA Championships that went under the radar a little bit. Again, you have all the plethora of athletes, the Sydney McLaughlin's, the Michael Normans, right? Ryan Benjamin's, Noah Lyles, Aria Knighton's. Go in the comments below. Let me know who your top performer or top performances were from these USA Championships, whether it be some of the athletes, the top athletes I didn't mention, or even some of the athletes that might not have gotten some of that recognition. Let me know. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and definitely tune in. We have a lot more coming and we'll be back again next time. Thanks.